Jesus comes up to them and puts his hand on them and says, get up, do not be afraid. And then they go back down the mountain. And he says to them, a long way, don't tell anybody what you just saw until after it's all been complete. It's a powerful, mysterious moment for them and for us. Because now they're going down the hill to embark on the trip to Jerusalem, which will be a trip of, of sorrow and of hardness. And maybe, maybe they're not any more certain than they were when they went up the mountain about what it's all about. But they carry at least the glory of that moment in their hearts, the, the, the reality of that experience. And they carry with them as well the words that are spoken to them on the mountain. There are three sets of words that are spoken directly to the disciples. The cloud overshadows the whole thing. This voice from heaven speaks and says, this is my son, my beloved. And he says, listen to him. Listen to so, so going down the mountain, they may not know or understand much more than they have before, but they heard this commandment, listen to him. And we can imagine they cling all the more closely to him, paying much more attention than they were before, taking him much less for granted. Listen to him. So the question for you and for me as we enter ourselves, as we come down from this mountain and enter ourselves into the turmoil of the Lenten season, into that season when, when we will recognize the, the hardness of life around us and within us, how is it that you and I listen to Jesus? Because I think many of us try to listen to Jesus in various ways over the course of our lives. Sometimes that listening is in, in regular prayer. Sometimes it's in a group of fellow believers. Most often, I think, the steadiest voice of Jesus is found in Scripture. And to listen to Jesus is to pay attention to what Jesus has to say in Scripture. That's why, that's why the, 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 the reading of the daily readings, day in and day out, is such a powerful thing. Because you read those readings and there's somebody, something from the Old Testament and the New Testament and the Gospel. And you you realize that there's a story that God is telling that, that is going to be told whether you're paying attention or not. That you are not the centerpiece of that story. That the voice of Jesus is the centerpiece of that story. And sometimes it will speak directly to what you're talking about in the rest of your life, and sometimes it'll seem a little off. But it's God's story and it's being told, and it's being told alongside your story, and you are not alone in listening to his story. Thousands of people have joined in listening to these daily stories. And, and you can do it now, of course, very easily. It's not just a matter of falling around your prayer book with you and seeing what you have to read. There's an app that you can get. It's called... Uh, ECP, and you just put that on your little cell phone and click, you get all the readings for the day. It's about as easy as it could be. And it's just the simplest way to, to ensure that you're listening to the voice that's not just yourself, that you're listening not just to the voices of the world, but you're listening to the story that God's telling at the very same so they go down this 
hill and they can cling closely to the voice of Jesus and maybe they download the app into their cell phone as well. Just to be sure. Like we do. And they also go down remembering that Jesus came over to them and touched them. That the, that the, that the connection with God was not just some glorious event that happened to them, but it was a touching by Jesus. And what did he say to them? He said two things. He said, get up. It's not just get up, actually, in the Greek. It's the same word that the angel speaks to the women who come to the tomb looking for Jesus on Easter morning, and he says to them, you're looking for him, he has gotten up. He has risen up. He has come to life again. That's the word that Jesus says to them. He says, get up. Don't just get up, but get up. Live into the life that's promised by this glorious scene. Get up and come with me. Don't be a spectator. Don't stay behind. Walk with me. Get up. Then he says, don't be afraid, because we are all so frequently afraid. We are afraid of this or that, things big and things small. And Jesus just says, you've seen what's happened today. So, so just come with me. Get up. Come with me. Don't be afraid. Listen to my voice. We will go to Jerusalem together. And it will not be an easy trip. Not for them, not for us. But on the other side of Jerusalem, we know the glory now. We've seen the glory that will be ours.